Hello my dear friends, you are on the Military Summary channel and today we will discuss the situation in Ukraine on the 1st of June of 2024. Today we have a lot of very interesting updates, so let's start. And the most important is that the Russians, after a very long pause, launched another massive missile strike trying to destroy it as many as possible or to damage as many as possible energy facilities all over the entire territory of Ukraine. We have the map of Russian strikes, we have the map of let's, the roads of Russian attacks, of caliber, of well, let's say cruise missiles and of course of drones. During the previous 24 hours, as I understand, the Russians were not using the uh, ballistic missiles, or at least we don't see this information on this map. Uh, later, uh, at, right after the first launches, right after the first explosions, we started receiving updates that mainly the Russians were targeting the energy facilities. We don't have enough, lots of videos, and not uh, so many videos were published by, let's say, different sources. The only information we have is that so information from the official sources of Ukraine, they are saying that the Russians were trying to get hydro uh, power plants, and we have a few reports that the Russians were trying to attack and destroy the hydro power Power plant in the vicinity of the town by the name of Kanyev. We have just the uh, satellite picture and reports that explosions and uh, strikes took place, took place there. Furthermore, we have a fire anomaly in the vicinity of the town by the name of Sitlavodsk. Another uh, hydro power plant was damaged and destroyed, but when talking about this case, we see that we have the map and the fire anomaly, which confirms that most likely the strike did take place exactly in this area and most likely the Russians managed to achieve some results. And when talking about videos, uh, we have uh, one video, once again, one another fire anomaly took place in the vicinity of the Zaporozhye and when talking about this territory, there is like Zelenodoysk power plant, this is the power plant and we see that the fire anomaly exactly is taking place in the vicinity and in the area of this power plant, most likely this, let's say, energy facility was damaged or even destroyed and when talking about videos, we have just the video from Zaporozhye and more precisely we have the video how the Russians uh, let's say strike and destroyed uh, the Zaporozhye Dnipro let's say power plant another hydro power plant as you can see very heavy explosions the Russians uh, very difficult to understand what kind of weapon the Russians were using for these purposes but once again the official official Ukraine authorities reported and stated that the situation in the energy sphere is very critical and difficult and most likely the Ukrainians will be forced to import around 100% of energy from the European countries and we understand that the price for energy is very high for the Ukrainians. Furthermore, the, according to information we have, the Ukrainians are planning to increase the cost, the price for energy in 1.6 times. So almost in two times and most likely before the winter they will be able to increase the price for energy even more. Which of course, uh, let's say, deals significant damage to Ukrainian economy and most important to the production on the production of weapons that the Ukrainians uh, later use against the Ru Russia. Furthermore, there were some reports about the Skander strikes and these are ballistic strikes that didn't, let's say, that wasn't included into this map of, let's say, missile strikes, missile roads. And the most important uh, ballistic strikes took place in the vicinity of the town by the name of Pakrovsk, Mirnagrad. First, we got just report that there were very heavy explosions. Later, we got some, uh, let's say, photos and uh, geolocations confirming the strikes with the Ukrainian police officer who were, uh, let's say, collecting the evidence of another, according to Ukrainian law, military military crime. As a result of strike, the Russians destroyed another temporary position of armed forces of Ukraine in this direction. Later, we got reports that some strikes took place in the Slavyansk. We have just the photos of the very heavy smoke and that there were very heavy explosion also by with the use of Iskander probably missile. Furthermore, I'll remind you that according to information we have during May, m months of May, the French France, Macron redeployed French troopers exactly in Slavyansk and that the main temporary position of these of French troopers are located exactly in the vicinity of this town. So maybe the Russians were trying to get them once again. Furthermore, we have reports about explosions in Liman, in Kharkiv itself, and there was strikes, Iskander strikes in Balakleya, and there was a very heavy explosions in Kharkiv itself. We have just the, let's say, the photos and so on. And this is about missile strikes. Also, we have two geolocations confirming that Russia, Russia continue hunting 
bombing and destroying the clean air defense forces. For example, in this video, we can see how the Russians managed to discover the P-18 radar that the Ukrainians were using for air defense purposes. And as a result of strike, that air defense system was destroyed. So, and another important video we received from Kharkiv itself. Very interesting and very important video. For example, in this video, we can see how the Russian drone was flying right above Kharkiv without any resistance, without any problems, without any air defense from the Ukrainian side. And as a result of Lancet strike, the Russians managed to discover and to destroy the Buk M1 air defense system. Of course, uh, that uh, wasn't the only target of the armored force of, of Russian Federation. Significant number of artillery systems also were discovered and destroyed by the Russians. Of course, the Ukrainians made lots of attempts to counterattack, to break the media, let's say, uh, situation. And during the previous 24 hours, the Ukrainians were bombing Belgorod with HIMARS systems, with cluster, with cluster rounds. So, and as you can see, just yesterday, we got official statement, official permission from the United States of America that the Ukrainians are allowed to use HIMARS systems on the territory of Russian Federation. And a few hours later, we see the first strikes conducted by the armed forces of Ukraine and they were attacking if you take a look at this uh, video the uh, settlement the city with the cluster rounds uh, with western weapon the russian sources published the video of parts of those hammers uh, missiles that were uh, brought down by the russian air defense and this is the real evidence that ukrainians were using exactly hammer system of united states production so now let's move to the situation on the ground we have additional updates let's go now let's say through them first of all uh, more and more uh, the area to Zolchev in direction of Kazachi uh, low point Zolchev is more and more active from the Russian side uh, most likely the Russians are about to finish or have already finished the concentration of forces along the border because the Ukrainians uh, start publishing significant number of videos of FPV drone strikes on Russian forces which confirms uh, first of all the concentration of Russians in this area when talking about Kazachi Lopony, we have uh, the uh, Lancet strike. Uh, the Russians discovered another artillery system, and as a result of uh, probably uh, another uh, Lancet strike, that artillery system was destroyed. I'll just remind you that just during the May, the Russians published around 300 cases of the use of this type of weapon, and the Russians are continuing increasing the use, the number of use of this type of weapon. The Russians established complete superiority over the territory, and the Ukrainians can show no resistance or anything. Uh, how to, let's say, break the situation in their favor. When talking about Lipsy, uh, there, there are no changes on the ground, just the regular activity. The Russians continue bombing the territory, trying to get and to destroy the concentration of Ukrainian forces, the reinforcements that arrives in the area, but without any changes on the ground. Today, I read very interesting article published by the Russians that the Ukrainians have concentrated on this direction, or when talking about open sources, the Ukrainians have already redeployed, and we have already seen the information about seven brigade of Ukrainian forces about two battalions, about few battalions, separate battalions, and about a uh, few comp platoons, a uh, few regiments, sorry, few regiments on these directions. And uh, so, and the Ukrainians, according to information we have, have concentrated around 50,000 soldiers on the Kharkiv area, and now the Ukrainians uh, start sometimes counterattacks and many, many other things. But when talking about the Russians, according to information we have, the Russians, since the beginning of the Kharkiv offensive operation, have introduced on the line of combat contact from Lipsy to Vovchansk around 25 a little bit less than 25 percent of forces that the russians that the group of forces north have on this direction but um, i'm not sure that the russians are going to introduce 100 percent of forces because this source also noted that the main russian forces are located and stretched between uh, bryansk area uh, kursk region and the belgorod region itself so this line this line it's a very it's a very big line it's a very big line of combat contact that these forces are responsible for and they need to protect and the length of this front line is around 600 kilometers and just 25 percent of forces on this direction were introduced on this small part of Kharkiv so this is the reason I don't think that they're going to introduce you more because they need to be 100 percent sure that the Russians would not be defeated and they would not lose some battle for some direction but anyway from on the other hand it confirms that the Russians uh, in the next phase of the special military operation are not going to limit themselves uh, just along the area between Kherson to Kupiansk, the Russians are planning to fight with Ukrainians from Gomel, the B Republic of Belarus, uh, till Crimea and Kherson direction. So all over the line of combat contact, there are going to be very heavy clashes during the next phase of the special military operation. 
Now let's move to the line of combat contact in Kupinsk area, the Russians continue offensive operation. We have reports about the additional Russian progress on the line Beristova and Stilimakhovka. There are very heavy clashes, but for now, without any geolocations confirming this, we have just one geolocation from this direction on the line Novostolovka, Stilimakhovka. On this video, we can see another attack conducted by the Russian forces. In that attack, the Russians were using just one tank and one personnel carrier. The tank was clearing the road, demining the area and supporting the Russian offensive when the Russian Russians reached the uh, trenches and the fortifications, they completed the finished successful landing and the Russian stormtroopers started declaring the trenches. So uh, this is that was the Russian attack and the Russians, as you can see, are getting closer and closer to Stilimakhovka. And while the main Russian forces were storming Stilimakhovka from the north and the northeast, uh, the Russian artillery forces were bombing Stilimakhovka itself with significant number of artillery rounds, multiple launch rocket systems trying to suppress the Ukrainian positions and not to redeploy their additional resources and resorts from the south to the north. Now let's move further to the south in direction of uh, Kovalevka, Novoigorovka, so it's uh, Barova direction. And according to information we have, according to different pro-Russian mappers, the Russians, as a result of offensive operation, managed to break through the Ukrainian defense belt and to establish around 50% of the village by the name of Novoigorovka. This is a very small building, small village, probably there are 30, 20, 30 uh, buildings, and around 10, 15 were captured by the Russians, and the Russians continue advancing further to the west. Uh, when talking about the south and Kupin's direction, we have just few updates, and the most important are that the Russians continue bombing and attacking the Ukrainian forces with FAPS, and today we got additional video of how the Russians bombed Siversk with ADAP 1500. Probably Siversk suffered significant number of strikes of this type of weapon. This is not the first case when the Russians were using ADAP 1500. The Russians, this is one of the most important priority uh, directions for the Armed Forces of Russian Federation, but without for now any active clashes, active movements on the ground. Now let's move to Chesavyar. Today we got a lot of updates from this territory. Once again, we got report that the Russians managed to cross Siversky Donetsk Donbass Canal and to start begin storming the uh, black by the name of Novo from the southern part, yet without any geolocations or video confirmations. But uh, we need to discuss this because this very important piece of news. Let's wait a little bit more. Maybe we're going to receive some updates during the upcoming night. But uh, regarding the situation in the central part of uh, Chasavyar, we continue receiving updates from the eastern Chasavyar and where the Russians continue their offensive operation, continue attempts to capture completely the territory. For example, on this video we can see another attack from the Russian side using T-90 tank, but the tank was damaged and destroyed by a Ukraine FPV drone and basically was destroyed. So the Russians also suffer significant losses, but they are not stopping, they are continuing moving and pushing and pushing and they pushing. The Ukrainians also suffer significant losses under very heavy Russian artillery fire, under very heavy Russian FPV drone strikes and of course under very heavy fire Russian aircraft strike of ADAP and FAPS and different other types of aircraft let's say bombs. Now let's move further to the south in direction of the fields between Ivanovska and Klishevka where the Russians continue offensive operation. Just a few days ago we were talking that the Russians as a result of another attack managed to establish complete control over this tree line, this one. And a few days later, more precisely today, the Russian sor the Ukrainian sources, more precisely the forces of 5th Assault Brigade published the video of another Russian attack. Uh, the Russians were storming this area with significant number of armored vehicles, tanks, personal carriers and infantry. The Russians were pretty successful. They to bypass the minefields, the first barriers, and to answer the tree lines, the trenches, and the fortifications, the Russians managed to land soldiers on the ground, and the Russians start clearing the area. We have adjusted the map based on this video. The most of the Ukrainian forces were forced to fall back from this part of the fortifications, further to the west in direction of this forest that located that goes along Siversky Danis Donbass Canal, and some forces were forced to fall back to the south in direction of the rich network of fortification, the target that the Russians are planning to storm during the next phases of the special military operation exactly in this direction. So the Russians, as we can see, are trying to improve their positions around Ivanovska and to completely force the Ukrainians to fall back from this territory. Now let's move to Avdiivka area where the Russians also continue offensive operation. We have just a small update, small gains of the armed force of Russian Federation. According to information we have during the previous 24 hours, the Russians continue improving their positions in Novoalexandrovka itself. And as a result of another wave of attack, the Russians managed to establish physical control over the road between Novoalexandrovka 
America and, and uh, the town by the name of Progress. So, so basically the Russians are about to begin another wave of attack to Nova Alexandrovka from the southeast, from this direction. So the situation is very critical for the Ukrainians. Furthermore, the Ukrainian, uh, the Ukrainian sources, Russian sources, uh, every single source confirms additional Russian progress among the fields further to the towns like Sokol. We have uh, the video confirming Russian progress and Russian control over this tree line and currently the distance between the edge Russian positions and Sokol itself is less than one kilometer. Furthermore, we have another dam destroyed in the vicinity of Liman Pershi. The Ukrainians continue, let's say, using these uh, roads, using these areas for redeployment, but mainly for evacuation of the armored vehicles, because uh, this area is under the responsibility of 47th Brigade, mechanized brigade that has uh, tanks like Abrams and Bradleys in their line. So that's why they uh, need to be 100% sure that when time comes, they have possibility to evacuate the vehicles, but the Russians destroy and control the main roads, trying not to allow the Ukrainians to do this. Furthermore, the sources report about additional Russian progress in the field, for the, to the west of Semyonovka and as a result of offensive uh, the Russians completely captured this territory and also about to begin uh, the offensive towards Novosilovka, Pershin, Novopakrovska. So the Russians are pushing and the Ukrainians are falling back. The most important updates from this direction is coming from the area of the village by the name of Yasnabrodovka. The Russian sources published significant number of strikes of FPV drone strike uh, forces of, dro of FPV droners on, Rus on Ukrainian positions among the fields between Karlovka and Yasnabrodovka. After the Russians cleared the area, they launched an offensive and as a result of offensive, according to different mappers, the Russians managed to establish complete control over these fields. And basically the Russians finished the semi-encirclement, half-encirclement of the village by the name of Yasnabrodovka. Either today or tomorrow the Ukrainians will be forced to fall back or will be encircled and destroyed by the Russians in the village. So two days and Yasnabrodovka will become under complete Russian control. No important updates about progress on the ground in the vicinity of Krasnogorovka, just few videos of how the Russians were hunting and destroying the Ukraine artillery forces. On this video we can see another electronic warfare equipment of the uh, Ukraine force that was destroyed as a result of strike. On this video we can see how the Russians were hunting and attacking the Ukraine artillery systems and positions in the fields between uh, Krasnogorovka, Marinka, Georgievka. A little bit further to the southwest we have additional videos of counter artillery duos, how the Russians were hunting and destroying the Ukraine artillery systems, howitzers, uh, Palladians, the 20 howitzers, the 30 howitzers, and crap holders and every single holder of the Western production. If we increase the numbers of this since the beginning of May, we're gonna see a significant number of artillery systems that were destroyed as a result of counter-artillery duels. The same story as we can see in Kharkiv direction, we can see on this direction as well, but when talking about Kharkiv, Russia mainly used Lancet forces to hunt and destroy the Ukraine artillery forces. When talking about this direction, we see that um, the Russians are operating mainly with artillery forces, so it's like a part of counter-artillery duels. So tens of tens of artillery systems of the uh, forces of Ukraine were destroyed just during the previous months. And the Russians continue doing the same things. Uh, Konstantinovka, the Russians are clearing the area, but without any attempts to attack the village. The, the most important updates from this direction is coming, uh, are coming from the lines Tipnoe, Slatka and Vadiana. Today we got additional videos confirming the additional Russian progress further to the west. On this video, for example, we can see the destroyed Russian tank, probably the results of another Russian attempt to attack the territory. Just yesterday we were talking about the Russian attacks towards uh, the northern part of the same true line. The, tr the trenches were captured by uh, the Russians, uh, let's say, light vehicles. So as you can see, the Russians are moving using broad front line attacks. Uh, so they will continue moving further to the west and the distance is getting uh, shorter and shorter to the main supply road. And as soon as the Russians are able to get to the artillery strikes, uh, the Uglidar is going to fall or we can start counting days of this. Uh, the Russians continue clearing of uh, Staromayorsk on Rajain and today the Ukrainian forces published the videos of how they were trying to repel Russian attacks during May and late May. But as we remember, most of Russian attacks say the Ukrainians um, haven't managed, didn't manage to stop and the Russians continue moving further to the north. Most of the mappers reported that the Russians opened another front line between uh, Kamyanska and Rabost and we will talk a lot, a, a little bit about the territory. Some uh, pro-Ukraine mappers updated their maps showing that the Russians captured this network of small fortifications. I'll remind you that during the May there were few explosions in the area. Mainly the Russians were bombing the territory with Tosla and Traverse system 
systems and we have a significant number of uh, strikes of this type of weapon and after the Russians cleared and pummeled this area completely they basically captured abandoned positions uh, Ukraine positions so that was something like abandoned position of the armed force of Ukraine and the Ukrainians suffered significant problems with supply support rotation because uh, these fields and these trenches were something like a secondary uh, for Ukraine and military authorities and the Russians used that opportunity first they pummeled they cleared the area and after that they captured the territory with the infantry so we not we don't have geolocations confirming this but we're making our like projections and conclusions based on the videos we received from this direction and the most important update during the previous 24 hours, of course, is a statement of the Minister of Defense of China when they reported that China, the Chinese army, is ready together with the Russian army to defend justice in the world. So very important statement. China made, uh, made the choice. China uh, chose uh, Russia and will fight with Russians, at least according to media report. But uh, this is not the most important. We have another funny thing. If you remember during the previous days, significant number of western countries uh, one after another were reporting that they allow they give permission to ukraine to bomb the territory of russian federation poland reported that they allow czech republic baltic states germany uh, germany announced a significant uh, let's say help another period air defense system macron was trying to create an a, 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 let's say unity and alliance ally um, with uh, let's say countries with states to send instructors on the territory of russia joe biden first secretly allowed to bomb the territory of russian federation then he allow allowed to do this officially so a lot of statements almost every single day some countries some states um, were doing these things um, a few times a day but as soon as china reported that they support russia we stop receiving any updates any reports any permissions from the western countries at all so this is the funniest thing ever i've seen during the special military operation and that's it for today military summary channel reminds to condemn any violence in the world thank you for watching subscribe to my channel put your likes to my patreon and have a good day bye bye